Hello friends, welcome to the Bosphere, your ultimate destination for interactive and engaging learning. I am Dibbo Jyoti, your explorer on this educational journey. Whether you are a student, a curious mind or a lifelong learner, this channel is designed to expand your horizons and nurture your thirst for knowledge. Friends, today's topic is agriculture, which is a very important topic we know that without agriculture it is not possible for us to live as it's help us to get the food from the nature farmers are the blessing for us now the question arises what is agriculture it is the practice of cultivating crops and rearing animals for various purposes we know it is a crucial aspect of human civilization providing food raw materials and employment opportunities now let discuss types of farming primitive subsistence farming commercial farming organic farming and plantation farming now let discuss the first one which is primitive subsistence farming primitive subsistence agriculture is practiced on small patches of land with the help of primitive tools like hoe and digging sticks and family or community labor friends if you'll see the footage it is a slash and burn technique which is a part of primitive subsistence farming slash and burn techniques basically the farmers cut down the trees of the forest and burn the plant remains and the land is used for farming next we'll move to intensive subsistence farming which is a important technique for south asian countries like india china bangladesh sri lanka malaysia indonesia etc now the question arises what is intensive subsistence farming it is labor intensive farming where high doses of biochemical inputs and irrigation are used for obtaining higher production main crop of intensive subsistence farming is paddy cultivation which is one of the major important crop of our country india friends now we'll move to commercial farming which is also known as the high capital investment farming especially in developed countries as we know in commercial farming per capita land and per capita income is very high main purpose of this type of agriculture is the use of higher doses of modern input such as high yielding variety seeds chemical fertilizer insecticides and pesticides in order to obtain high productivity In commercial farming main crop is wheat. In India, Punjab and Uttar Pradesh are the leading producer of wheat. Friends, now we'll move to plantation farming, which is also known as one crop scientific method farming. As I said, it is a single crop is grown on a large area. If you'll see friends, plantations cover large tract of land using capital intensive input. with the help of migrant laborers friends important plantation crops in india are tea coffee rubber sugarcane and banana here sugarcane is a good source of vitamin c and antioxidants that may boost your immunity now let's discuss the three cropping season of our country winter crops which is known as ravi monsoon crops which is known as kharif and summer crops which is famous for jaid the first crop and the most important one is rice which is one of the staple crops in india it is widely cultivated in different states the leading one is west bengal followed by uttar pradesh andhra pradesh and punjab we all know india is depending on monsoon climate rice is primarily grown in regions with high rainfall or access to irrigation fields next crop is wheat Wheat is another important staple crop in India, mainly grown in the northern states of Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, and Madhya Pradesh. Wheat is also known as Ravi crops. It is shown in winter and harvested in spring. Next important crop is millet. Millet such as jowar, bajra, and ragi are traditional coarse grains cultivated in India. Millets are drought tolerant crops. Rajasthan is the leading one for bajra cultivation. Maharashtra is the leading one for jowar cultivation and Karnataka is the leading one for ragi cultivation. Next crop is pulses. Pulses are an essential source of protein in the Indian diet. 
Major pulse crops grown in India include chickpeas, which is known as gram, pigeon peas or tur or arhar, lentils or masoor, and black gram for udar. Friends, next important crop is sugarcane. India is one of the largest producer of sugarcane in the world. Uttar Pradesh is the leading one for sugarcane cultivation, followed by Maharashtra, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu. Friends, we all love to explore different kind of foods. Sugarcane is used for sugar production, as well as for making jaggery and molasses. Next crop is cotton. Black soil is leading one for cotton cultivation. Gujarat and Maharashtra are the leading states for cotton cultivation. Friends, we all love to buy different kind of dresses. Cotton is a significant source of raw material for the textile industry. From where we are getting those dresses. We all love to visit mountain and hills. Tea cultivation is the main cultivation there. India is renowned for its tea production, particularly in the region of Assam, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. These undulating topography of mountain areas have favorable climatic condition for tea cultivation. Friends, coffee in winter is having a different connection, isn't it? Coffee is a predominantly cultivated in southern states of Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. India is known for its Arabica and Robusta varieties of coffee. Next is oil seeds. Oil seeds such as mustard, groundnut, soybean and sesame are grown in various parts of India. Remember, India is the leading producer of groundnut in world. Next crop is most important crop as alternative of plastic. Jute is another important fiber crop, mainly cultivated in West Bengal, Bihar and Assam. Jute is used for making sacks, bags, ropes and other packaging materials. Friends, let's talk about the history of our agricultural system of our country. In agriculture, the Green Revolution brought significant technological reforms by introducing high yielding crop varieties, improved irrigation system, and efficient use of fertilizers and pesticides. Green Revolution mainly occurred in Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, these northwestern states during 1960 to 1970s decade. The digital revolution has also led to the adaptation of modern farming techniques such as precision agriculture, remote sensing, and use of drones for crop monitoring leading to increased productivity and resource optimization. Friends, institutional reforms aims to improve governance, efficiency, and transparency in various sectors in India. Now let's talk about a very important topic which is known as the Bhutan movement initiated by famous Binoba Bhave in the 1950s aimed at promoting voluntary land redistribution from wealthy landowners to landless peasants. The initiative was very important for that time being. The movement emphasized the concept of land as a gift Bhutan and encouraged landowners to donate their excess land for redistribution among the landless and disadvantaged section of the society. Now we will discuss in short the impact of globalization agriculture in India. Globalization can help in market access and trade liberalization. Globalization also helps in technological advancements and knowledge transfer. Friends, today's last topic is genetic engineering, which is recognized as a powerful supplement in inventing new hybrid varieties of seeds. Friends, we reach at the end of the session. Thank you for choosing Dibbosphere as your learning companion. We'll meet very soon.